Today I want to review the Made Simple series for you. The Made Simple series is a part of a complete home library of practical information published by Doubleday and includes mathematics and sciences and philosophy and religion uh, and five languages, Latin, French, German, Spanish, and Italian. Um, it's a small series, obviously, but it's really tried and proven. They've been around for 50 years. They're all written originally in the what I consider to be the golden age of language course production. They were all published between 1955 and 65, and most of them have been revised. And at any rate, they're all uh, still available, readily available, and uh, they might be very much worth your while investigating. Um, let me begin with the Latin course, first and foremost, because it's a little bit different from the others. Uh, here's the table of contents. I, I hope it's legible. Um, you can see that uh, the titles, after the chapter titles, uh, you're given uh, readings first and foremost from Romulus and Remus about the German Germans and uh, the book of John and uh, Adeste Fideles because this book concentrates not primarily upon classical Latin uh, but also gives you fair amounts of church Latin and medieval uh, Latin stories. So uh, it works after the initial introduction mainly through uh, bilingual text columns. Here's the Gospel of John up here, Latin, English, and then a reading from about the Roman people, Latin, English, Avalonga, Latin, English. So you can see it's bilingual text columns, which um, if you perhaps remember the very first video I made of this series about uh, the Asimil uh, method, which I consider to be the best method out there overall, uh, one reason I believe that is because it makes use of these bilingual uh, text columns, which is such a, a wonderful way of, of presenting a foreign language that it's really flabbergasting that it's not uh, used more often. This is a, a series that, that does make use of it, and in particular this Latin book is almost more of a reader than anything else, uh, just giving you bilingual text columns, and then after each uh, text you get uh, some specific vocabulary uh, and some grammar that's covered in the text, and some exercises to do with that. So uh, there's not that much more to, to say about this method. Uh, it's uh, kind of streamlined, but it is very good for reviewing, definitely. I don't know about actually learning, because maybe it goes a bit too fast at the beginning and is a bit too streamlined, but if you're, uh, you learned Latin at some point and didn't use it for a while uh, and you want to review it, uh, this is a very good book to use to do that. Um, so uh, I, uh, I've used it myself in that fashion uh, many years uh, back, and uh, I remember uh, finding it uh, quite, quite helpful. Um, so that's the Latin book. As I said, the Latin book is different because it's uh, written by... Well, here, let me show you the other books. Here's uh, chapter 20 of the French book, French Made Simple. And let me read, it's about the bad weather, and let me read the English translation. It says, uh, it is raining buckets, the maid opens the door of the house of Mr. and Mrs. Potter. Mr. Picard enters, the maid says, good evening, Mr. Picard, what nasty weather. Come in, come in, you are soaking wet, give me your raincoat and hat. Put your umbrella in the umbrella stand, you can leave your rubbers here in the hall. Mr. Picard answers, thank you, now I feel better, it's raining buckets, but it's not cold. I'm sure I shall not catch cold, is Mr. Potter at home? And here's the, uh beginning of chapter 20 about bad weather in the German method. Uh, it was the month of March. It was raining buckets when Mr. Müller reached Mr. Clark's house. He rang the doorbell and William, the younger son, opened the door. Mr. Müller entered. Uh, William said to him, Good evening, Mr. Müller. What terrible weather. Come in. Come into the house. You are wet through and through. Please give me a raincoat and a hat. Put your umbrella in the umbrella stand. You can leave your rubbers in the vestibule. And the uh, it's chapter 21 in the Italian method, uh, it's raining buckets when Mr. Facci arrives at the home of Mr. Cabot. The maid opens the door. Mr. Facci answers. The maid says to him, good evening, Mr. Facci. What terrible weather. Come in. Come into the house. And so on and so forth. It's chapter 19 in the Spanish method. And it's about what bad weather. It's raining hard. The maid opens the door of the house of Mr. and Mrs. Adams. Mr. Lopez enters. The maid says, good evening, Mr. Lopez. What rainy weather. Come in. Uh, you get the picture. These are uh, a very strong strong feature of this series for polyglots, would be polyglots, people who want to learn more than one language, is that these books have been written by one person, in essence. They all have two authors, uh, Eugene Jackson, I don't know anything about him other than what it says here. He was the chairman of foreign languages at Samuel J. Tilden High School. And he teamed up with somebody with a PhD who was the chairperson of a language department, a college language department, uh, to, I guess, give the books more credibility, but obviously he's the mind behind it. So not only are these books uh, identical uh, in their basic outline, because some 
uh, company decided that, but because some experienced language teacher himself did it. So there's a unity to these that really makes it easy for somebody who has learned one language with them to go and then learn other languages. The unity is really uh, quite quite thoroughgoing, and yet you also get in these books a great deal of the specific culture of the country. So the unity does not uh, transcend, uh, push, the, push the language to fit a mold, but rather takes a mold and then fits that mold into the language. So the table of contents, there are 40 or 41 chapters for each one, and they do uh, follow the exact same structure and say uh, chapter uh, 12 will always be about numbers, but the monetary system, which is chapter 13, is suited to each country. Uh, and then you get a chapter of about the specific climate of the country after the weather talks about and the cooking in the country. Uh, and then uh, towards the end of the book, uh, you take a trip around. And in Italy, you go to Rome, Ostia, uh, from Rome to Castel Gandalfo, and then to Florence. Uh, and the Spanish book is set in Mexico. Uh, so you get Mexican cuisine, Mexican uh, money. Uh, and then when you travel around Mexico, uh, you uh, go to uh, El Paseo de la Reforma, El Mercado de Toluca, uh, then you go to La Plaza, Un Paseo a Teotihuacan, and uh, you travel around. In the, um, in the French book, you go to... Uh, you also have lots of... Uh, there's a chapter 16, so it's about history uh, of the country. Uh, and when you in France, you travel around, and where do you go? You go to uh, Le Mont Saint-Michel, uh, Guignol, uh, and in the German book, you, what do you visit? You visit uh, the climate of Germany, you travel around uh, Munich, and uh, then you go to the Amazé and uh, travel around. So the, the structure is the same, and like the Latin book, it's a bilingual text format, uh, which is uh, very comfortable, very nice to work with, and the exercises then follow and are very useful. So uh, it's a, I think these series are probably better for reviewing than for uh, learning flat out because uh, they have two drawbacks. Uh, and the first drawback is that there is no audio that accompanies this. And uh, so if you're the kind of learner that doesn't like or need or want audio because you can hear the language around you or you're just not congenial to, to listening to it or uh, you know the sound of the language but you just need to revise, that's fine. But really to begin learning a language, you, you need to have uh, the sound of it as, as well as the text that goes with you. And then although these uh, dialogues get to my mind, uh, pretty complicated and, and sophisticated towards the end. To be utterly fair, still, when I count up the vocabulary in the end of the text, they're, they're not that extensive. They're only in about the 900 uh, word level. There's slim volumes of about 150 pages, so uh, that's understandable, but you would want to have more to uh, really learn a language. Um, these books remind me, I think because of their marketing, of another series, the Shom Outline series, and I'd like to show you how they're different. Again, the, uh, the Made Simple series are unified stories, unified texts of one learner and his teacher traveling around the country. And so they are, I think, better for reviewing than for actually learning, but you could learn with them. So the, the presentation of the grammar follows the, the outline of the lesson. Whereas these outline series, the Shom's outline series, the sort of traditional one, the Italian grammar looks like that, now they're marketed like this. Uh, there's no story, there's no uh, unit, and these are sort of more like reference grammars that they take the, uh, they give you nouns, prepositions, uh, in, in, you know, in, in sequence, and then these have uh, sort of um, exercise book type blank exercises for you to fill in. So that's the difference between the Shams and the uh, Made Simple series. So, um, Made Simple.